And joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a two-time, two-time Super Bowl champion. Everybody knows him from the work that he's done with the Patriots. He was with the Dolphins for a little bit, back to the Patriots, and then this offseason he signed with the Los Angeles Chargers. And now, no coinky dink, the Los Angeles Chargers have stamped their ticket to the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle Van Noy. Yay, Yay, Kyle! Kyle, how you doing, buddy? First of all, I got to apologize for our PR department. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I got to throw them under the bus a little bit. <laughs> no, I think they were doing a little gamesmanship. I think it was smart by the PR right. department, you know, make you think that you don't have any friends in Indy, so you'll come out on primetime mm -hmm. and shit all over the Colts. Let's dive into it. You guys punch your ticket to the playoffs. This is something I think you obviously expected as soon as you got there. We talked to you whenever you got there, how much you loved the building, how much you loved the team, how much talent there was. This season kind of has one of these you've remained quiet behind the scenes now you guys are in the playoffs what have you seen from the team as of late and what growth have you seen since the beginning of the year that have you know now you guys are hey you're a playoff fucking the chargers yeah. Oh, yeah. are a playoff program what have you seen uh this year from behind the scenes kyle Ooh, man, we could be here all day talking about that no let's do it <laughs> I oh, do. Yeah. I, that's right. something that everybody else is trying to find kyle everybody's trying yeah. to find that right now I, I agree. It's been a lot. Uh, I feel very blessed to be in the situation that I've that I'm in here because I've been able to communicate with everybody saying, hey, we just we just got to keep grinding. You know, everybody was kind of up and down at the beginning of the year. So many injuries. Uh, Coach Staley and uh, Tom Telesco did a great job of just staying positive and focused on the main thing, which is just winning games. And I think when it came down to it as a group, we all got together and we, we were, you know, we remained focused on that goal, which is just to win one game at a time and eventually get in that tournament. You know, we, we had a couple bumps in the roads with the Kansas City losing both of those games and, you know, getting smacked by Jacksonville. My goodness. Um, hey, they're a good team. A couple, mm -hmm. a couple other L's here and there, but we remained on the main goal, which was just to keep winning each and every week. And now we're here where we're at. We're nine and six, and we we got the battle of L.A. this week. You know, the McVay and Staley they know each other well. We have some team. I have some teammates here that played for the Rams, so uh, they're going to want to go. And I think the other side, they're going to want to go too. Uh, McVay's going to show that he's still one of the top notch coaches bringing Baker in, you know, and he's slinging that thing. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Hey, um, hey no wristband. No wristband on Baker either. <laughs> That's yeah. His brain, I don't think we've respected Baker Mayfield's brain. Like, nobody has mentioned mm -mm, that Baker Mayfield has a good brain ever since. That dude has a photographic memory. They're going no wristband. Have you started looking into their offense at all? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. No, okay. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still trying to recover from this flight. Yeah, long one, huh? Uh, yeah, well, we got in at six. I walked in at six a.m. to a screaming baby, so it was daddy daycare when I got home with wifey, bro. I got respect for that. You know, punch a ticket to the playoffs, make a big play on Monday Night Football, hop on a long ass plane. Now you're dad. Now you're now. This is what really matters in life, and obviously yep. you're an incredible dad. I can't wait to reach out to you with questions that I have. But let's let's get back to you being, you know an older guy in the league now. I didn't hear you talk about this much ever in your answer right there, and I think this is what we expected with you becoming a member of their team, but sources have told me, <laughs> sources have told me that behind the scenes, you've gotten to a point where you're a little bit more comfortable to be a vocal leader uh, with that team. Is that a real thing? And how long did that take? And did you not want to step on anybody's toes? How did that kind of come about, you think? Wow, you have good sources. Ah! <laughs> journalism. Hey, that's Hell journalism. Yeah. Hell yeah. I did. We just did journalism. Yeah, Woo! Yeah. We did the journalism. League circles. You guys, you guys did a good job. <laughs> Boom! Boots on the ground, too. Uh, yeah. My uh -huh. sources face-to-face -to -face told me. <laughs> no, no. That's real, though. I heard that. I expected it, I think. But them pointing it out as like being a, hey, like a real benefit for our team mm -hmm. is that Kyle has kind of gotten comfortable enough to be a vocal leader. That's real. When did that happen? And why do you think that took place? Yeah, I think it it was something that I was battling because, you know, as an older player, when you're not performing well uh, to your standard, like I wasn't performing how I wanted to perform, you know, playing with a couple injuries here and there. And you want to 
you want to pick your spots of when you want to say something. Then finally, like I was healthy enough and we were, it was after, uh, I want to say we were six and six, whatever time that was. And I felt like that was a great opportunity to finally get the guys together and really just talk ball with them. No coaches, no outside anything, just have everybody come together and just be a, a unit. And I feel like as a group, K-Mac, DJ, they've done a great job. Um, oh. And then I just felt like I want to put my stamp on it as far as doing what I do best. And that's getting, uh, building relationships with folks, getting people to buy into everything that we're doing, get on the same page and win games. Like I, I told you this a long time ago, anywhere I go, I win. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, that's how I roll. Like, I don't care if it hurts your feelings. Like, I win and I want to win and I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to come here and bring that winning culture and that winning mindset. And I know all, all the rest of our guys have that same mindset. And, you know, anytime you have a quarterback like number 10 too, like your, your, your Dude. shot to win skyrockets. I mean, he's a really good player. Every throw he makes, it seems like it's just like a check down. Like it's just like effort. It's like a and he has that like three quarter. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah. looks like he's like almost skipping a rock, and then it's a fucking thirty five yard laser, and it's like, <laughs> oh my god, this dude is yeah. throwing missiles. I like to hear that about you though, man, because there's there's a lot of conversation happening right now around the NFL, and I don't know how much you can pay attention to it, especially because you guys are in the middle of a playoff push and you're building relationships and everything like that. There's a lot of cultures that are fucking getting exposed for being broke this NFL season, and it's getting a lot more media and press coverage, I think, than it ever has before about culture, 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 trigger word. Everybody, yeah. else, everybody always says, it's cliche, but like our culture. That's how you have to talk about culture now, but Having a veteran that like gets yeah, it, yeah, and you like hit it right there, right? Isn't that been, that's a real I've been thing? Trying to, I've been trying to tell people, man. Everybody, you know, obviously it's a young man's game. We, everybody, I'll be the first one to say it. You'll be the same one. Everybody, AJ, D, but everybody who's played in it is it's a young man's game, right? But if you're trying to win and you're trying to go where you want to go, you definitely need veteran players. It's just you look at all the Super Bowl teams. Uh, Previous, I mean, they're all older players. You could argue, um, you know, the Rams were older. The Chiefs, when they won, they were older besides Patrick Mahomes. I mean, uh, the Patriots, we were always older when I was playing there. Um, you know, you could just go down the line of Super Bowl. I mean, you got your guy, Aaron Rodgers, your guy. Oh, yeah. They were older. They were older. So just if you look at the teams that go far in those playoffs, they're experienced, they're seasoned. They've been through it, and, you know, more teams want to go this young route, which is cool, but they're not going to go where they want to go. That's, that's just that's, my opinion. You guys don't have anybody that's been there before, so it might be uncharted waters, and some people will take to those situations like a fish to water, but not everybody will. So whenever a situation kind of bullets start to fly, it's always nice to have somebody that isn't a coach being like, hey, this is what we got to do. We got to lock it. We're hearing about people missing not just one building now, multiple buildings. Missing Jeez. team meetings, middle of season, just missing team meetings and coming in and just being like, hey, sorry about it, man. What? Yeah. I didn't know. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's happening in play. Like, that can't happen. <laughs> that can't happen. It, 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 exactly your reaction was, it's unbelievable what's going on in some places around the end. It's absurd right now, Kyle. Darius has a question. We could talk all day about <laughs> that right uh -huh. there. Darius has that's a question nice. for you, though, Kyle. Hey, Kyle, been a, a two-time Super Bowl champ. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of people have not experienced that. But what's the, the biggest difference for the younger players and for the fans that may not know going into playoff ball week in, week out? Like, what's the difference from that in the regular season? Who love D-Butt, man. You got some good questions. Uh, <laughs> You've been around, Honestly, man. There, there, there's a, there's a couple, but the ones that hit, that come to my mind the fastest would just be the attention to detail and the skill of the art form of football. And what I mean by that is oh. the coaching with the playing mm -hmm. and the different chess matches that you see, how they're trying to attack a team. Uh, the level of IQs that are out on the field of guys that are tuned into their job and what offensers trying to do and defensive guys are doing checks and just being, you know, so locked into 
the intricacies of football. And I know that I'm going all over the place right there, but no, but you have to be locked I, in. Yeah, so you have to yeah, be locked just in. Yeah, IQ, to do that. but the IQ level of football out there. I mean, when you're playing, it brings back memories when I'm I'm playing against. Um, we're playing against Steelers and back in AFC championship in 2016 and Bill comes in, grabs a couple of us and he comes into the team meeting room and he's like, yo, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, it's a pass when he, his body language is like, oh, he's not out of the league now. But so when his foot was up or mm -hmm. his foot was like <laughs> together, you knew it was run and pass. And so oh, no. you had all of us <laughs> out there when the first play, we we're like, ah, well, let's check it out. And then the second play, oh, let's shit, check it trust out again. it, trust it, <laughs> yeah, trust it. Th th you know, the next series, we're like, we're trusting it. And so we're yelling pass, pass, pass. And just those little things that you can get up on a team is huge so you already have the advantage if you know that play every time you walk up is a run or a pass because then you're yelling pass or run and everybody's like they're looking at each other like what the hell is their key mm -hmm. so just something like that it's is your fucking move your <laughs> <laughs> hey is it our tackle it's our tackle uh, we've been telling them yeah, you can, we can tell ben now appreciate you ben <laughs> uh we know you got to go you're in the middle of your work uh, you're in the middle of a work day. I got five minutes. I got five minutes. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. We minutes. appreciate you. That was an incredible question, D. But Connor has one for you. Yeah, Kyle, you just mentioned Bill Belichick, and obviously him and Staley are years apart as far as age. But what's the biggest coaching difference? Because Staley, you know, he has been known to be a little unconventional, go for it on fourth down and all those things, and that is basically the opposite of what happened in New England. So how have you gelled with him coming from New England? Staley is very, very smart. He has a bright future in the NFL. Um, obviously, he's my coach, so I'm going to say good things, right? But just he loves football, man. He's so energetic. Uh, these, these new the, – you guys have talked to these new age coaches, the McVeighs, the Shanahans, wow, the LaFleurs, all these dudes. These dudes are like – nerds you know <laughs> <laughs> and i say i say that in a good way right yes nerds football nerds sense that they they love football they love the history they love the ins and outs about everything and i respect that uh they love their job they love what they do i would say the biggest difference between bill and uh and staley's relationships he has relationships with every single player on the team uh, it's really impressive how he can work a room uh, he's got everybody number on, in their favorites. He can call them right then and there. And any player he reaches out, you know, it, it, I respect that. And and to in this new age of players, you got to do that. And he's done a great job of that. And I'm not saying Bill, I have a great relationship with Bill, but not everybody does. And so I would say that's the biggest difference is the relationship base that Staley forms versus Bill. I don't think you're burying Bill there at all no. by saying that. Yeah. But that was what Staley was talking about, how COVID year, yeah. like my entire thing is relationships. In the COVID year, I literally wasn't even allowed to be mm -hmm. around anybody. He's invested huh, in everybody. That's why everybody buys in what he's got going on. So whenever you hit a little rocky road, people are going to trust the vision still because they're friends with the guy. Yeah, you. I mean, you like him and you trust him. I mean, he, he hasn't lied. You know what I mean? Like, Everything he's told guys has been truthful, which is, you know, kind of hard in our business, right? It's a fact. <laughs> to the yoga. Did you see him? <laughs> did you see him doing? Uh, did you see? That? Is that every day of practice or just at stadiums? I was like, fam, we, now we know we got why you have three kids, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Good flexibility in the back and the hips. Happy he's staying healthy. Same with you, man. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We know you're very busy. Congrats on the success. Congrats on the new role over there, it sounds like, and the health. Thank and you. let's let's finish this thing strong, huh? Hey, I, one thing I will say is I was I was pissed I didn't know you were at the game because I was about to do my celebration was going to be towards you. <laughs> it was going to be... It was going to be the punt and then the Conor oh, McGregor. No. You know? Oh, no. Shit. Oh, already. And I didn't see you until I saw a clip saying that you were at the game with your mom and your, you know. Yeah, the whole crew. Cute, but you had the whole crew. Yeah. 
Well, next we, time, next time. You guys got to pick on the uh, other side uh-huh. and did a full rundown mm-hmm. for the photo. Not right? me, not me, not me, not me. I'm too, I'm, I, I go straight to the bench. They know that. Hey, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> well, you want a 70-yard sprint right now? I don't think okay. I got that, but I will celebrate over there. Your team was electrifying to watch. Seems like you guys got to figure it out. Happy for you. Happy holidays. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Happy Happy New Year's, everyone. Enjoy. Be safe. Hell yeah. Kyle Van Noy. Yeah, Kyle!